every the Tuesday, sorry, I was caught off guard like right before I jumped on. But so, okay, so every Tuesday I am jumping on here live to answer any of your questions that you guys may have about homeschooling, about any of the Florida scholarships that are available, uh, anything homeschooling in general, like nationwide, and um, even in other countries too. If you have curriculum questions, I'm here to answer them. I am taking this time once a week to answer your questions because I know there's a lot of new homeschoolers out there. A lot of you guys have um, something come up this week and you just wanna ask a question from someone. So I have nothing other to talk about than answer your questions. And I already see that there's two people on there. So if you guys don't mind just saying hi and if you have any questions or like, you want to talk about anything. Oh, I do want to mention, um, I, I did commit to doing this every Tuesday at 930. I'm planning on doing it. Well, when I do the comp, because I'm doing up to North Carolina to do a conference, um, I will not be available that Tuesday, but, um, I'm going to try to do it up until school starts around August time. So, but next week I will not be able to do it it is Passover and we do celebrate Passover. So we will be enjoying that instead. So I will make sure to get you guys some videos out that you can watch and some reels and such. So does anybody have any questions? <laughs> I see I have one person on. It usually takes a while for this thing to get going. Um, I'm trying to think what I can show you. I got four people up. It's gonna come slow, it usually does. Um, I'm, I've got like, oh, I'm working on, I guess I could just show you some stuff that I'm working on in here. Um, there's really not that much, I'll be honest. Not, not too much exciting things. I do know that right over here. Oh, I have this. Let me just show you this. Why not? While I wait for you guys who have questions, please leave comments and a question, all the questions in the chat, chat. So, um, I just got this for Naomi. I think I did a video on this. Anyway, we're going through this right now. This is the Not Consumed Ministries with my brother's keeper for... Okay, so this is really interesting because we started doing these. See, now I can be like really, really open and honest with you how this is working. So this is the, the preschool curriculum. And I thought it would be amazing for Naomi. And it was for a little bit. And then I realized... Um, actually, I'll kind of show you. I love Not Consumed. I really do. Um, let me just open and show you. And please, if you have questions, jump in, share all the things. Ask me questions. Share me. Actually, I should ask you guys a question. Like, how is your end of the year going? Like, are you able to kind of close out comfortably? Or are you finishing up your curriculum? You know, how is that going? Um, just kind of curious. So this is the famous, my, I'll wait for you to comment. But this is the famous My Brother's Keeper. And... It, this is like her most popular one, actually. But um, this is preschool, and it's all like poetry. I don't know if you guys can see it. So I was reading this with Naomi. She doesn't really understand it. And I'm, I'm probably going to put these on hold for a while. It says, before your parents knew, it says, knew or named you, God was working carefully to form and shape and wonderfully make you exactly the way he wanted you to be. But here's another truth to know. It may be one you don't expect. Your siblings also made, also wonderfully made, so show them some love and respect. It's great, but um, I don't think Naomi understands this too much. There are stickers. I do like that. Each one of your siblings was created by God in a unique way. Color the stickers to match your siblings. So, okay, cool. So I, I like it a lot, this curriculum, but I think I'm gonna wait a couple of years for Naomi to kind of catch up developmentally. So I know I said I was using it with her, but I thought I'd come back and say that's what she used, by the way, the stickers. I I do feel like she's not ready developmentally, so I'm going to put this on hold. I just thought I'd share it with you while I waited. So, um, all right, more people are jumping on. So we close out kindergarten math curriculum this week. This week. Awesome. Are you guys waiting? This is what we do. We kind of wait out until... Um, August, like I don't even do summer slide stuff. I just kind of go, okay, we're done. And uh, we're not going to do it until, <laughs> especially, I feel like math, I should be doing some kind of like catch up. But I feel like when we're done with math, I just want to be done with math with them. I love math, don't get me wrong. But when I'm done with math with my kids, I want to be, in, I want to be done. So you wish Apologia had a curriculum math. 
So how is the Apology of Math going? Are you using it? I'm kind of curious. I'm making so much noise over here. I'm so sorry. I want to get back in the plastic wrap. <laughs> I will do this later. Um, how is the Apology of Curriculum? I'm really, really curious how that is. Like, do you like it? I guess you like it because you said that you wish they had a curriculum math. I'm kind of curious to see. Um, I bought a workbook to do for summer practice. See, that's smart. I, I should probably do that. Um, I really like it. We used it with the second and third. So back to the apology for those of you guys that are watching and not reading the chats with me. So I really liked it. We used it for second and third grade. We used it for half of fourth grade, but because it's some family health. Okay, switch, switch to teaching textbooks. Teaching textbooks is a good like net um, when you need just a break from that. Um, that's cool. I was wondering how they kind of compare. I've been looking at a lot of math curriculum because we've been using teaching textbooks for a really long time. And, um, my oldest son, we've had so much, I mean, it just, he, he takes it in and he does really, really well with teaching textbooks. But, um, and my second son, when he went through teaching textbook, he just like breezed right through it. Like it was so easy for him that he would be done in 15 minutes. So we decided with my second son to kind of beef it up a little bit. And we started him on BJU, which he is still breezing through, ironically. Um, and so I was going to try Saxon, but I, I have like kind of, it's a very tedious curriculum and um, boring too. Dry, very dry, uh, but it works. It gets the job done kind of thing. However, my sister-in-law, who is awesome and I love her very much, she has her master's degree in mathematics and um, she's got a, I would love to have her on here, but I don't, she's very busy. Um, she has her master's degree in mathematics and actually taught uh, high school math for a while. And then she decided to homeschool like me. She was actually one of the ones that convinced me to homeschool because she, her son is older than, I think he's 15 and my son is 14. So it didn't take much convincing. Um, and so she, she is working with him. He has auto, he has autism. She says that Matthew C works amazing, but she also likes to teach from the Forrester curriculum because she says hands down, that's the best algebra when it comes to getting prepped for Forrester. It's good old, she's always like good old fashioned Forrester. Um, I think there's also a guy that does some videos along with it. There's some, I got to find out this summer because I think I might start my high schooler on Forrester because he's been doing teaching textbooks for so long and he's doing so well with it. But, um, he really, he wants to go to college now and I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I want to see his test scores. We did the Iowa because now in the state of Florida, if you want to continue with this one specific scholarship, you have to do testing. So I just tested him with Iowa and, um, so we'll see how his test scores come out after teaching textbooks. But um, my daughter, it's not, teaching textbooks is not, it's not um, working. And I thought it worked for so long. I think she just really struggles with math a lot, which breaks mama's heart who loves math, but um, she really struggles. And she actually said to me, she wants to go to a curriculum that's very hands-on now with me. And she wants to work with me because I, I really think because she sees Naomi a lot uh, working with me one-on-one, -on -one, I think she wants that one-on-one -on -one with mom and she knows I like math, so. All right, I have to go back and read your comments because I got on a tangent. Um, okay. Because I want to hear from you guys. Does anybody want to? I don't I don't have it set. Ah, sometimes I have it set where I can have you guys jump on with me, but today I didn't do that. And I haven't had anybody jump on with me yet. And I actually really want to have someone jump on with me yet, but someone I know. Someone I know. All right. So I want to try Shorman Math or Denison Math. You want to know something funny about Denison math? Can I tell you a story? It's not a story. It's short. I promise. Do you... Okay, Denison. I think it's Denison. If I'm saying it wrong, uh, do you know Pennies and Salt? Megan over at Pennies and Salt? Um, Denison was actually her high school math teacher. <laughs> so if you want to know about Denison math, you go over to Pennies and Salt on YouTube and check out Megan because that was her high school math teacher. Um, and she... When I was talking to her, she said that... Um, how did she phrase it? She was so thankful that he came out with a math curriculum because that's how she learned math specifically from him. And he was the best teacher she ever had. 
So there you go. Um, PEP question. I am an uncomfortable, I am uncomfortable terminating my homeschool. How do you reason with this? Okay, that's a really good question. Very good question. A lot of people have that question and it makes them nervous. So now I get to explain the fun things. It's all political. It's all political and it's all gathering data. That's it for the government, okay? I know that sounds really, it's, PEP is not a set in stone program. It is It is one of those things you're going to reevaluate re in about five years. Just kind of keep that in the back of your mind as I talk about this. In the state of Florida, we are an attendance-based um, schooling, okay? That basically means that every single child that is accounted for in the state of Florida has to fall under um, private school, public school, PEP program, and homeschool. PEP program is brand new this year, brand new. And they had to add it as an extra category because before it was private school, public school, and homeschool. Now, if you umbrella school, which is, is a thing, right? You hear umbrella schooling, it's homeschooling, you're just under an umbrella. In the state of Florida, that's gonna fall under private school. So when you umbrella school, you're gonna have to go through all that. Um, but because this year, they determined that there was going to be the PEP category, they wanted to keep the attendance separate from the homeschoolers. So, Understanding that makes you see, okay, we're just trying to categorize everybody. Yes, PEP is going to function like homeschooling as of right now. Of course, okay, this is just my opinion based on, okay, so I know Brenda Dickinson, I know Jason Crawford, which are both our lobbyists for the state of Florida. This is my opinion. This is not coming from, and I have to be careful what I say because a lot, a lot of people know that I'm friends with them. And, and I'm really good friends with Jason and his wife, Crystal. Um, but I want to be careful because this is my opinion and I don't want to be speaking what they said. I feel like that's really important that I, I make that clear. Um, my opinion is that PEP is there. Okay, how do I phrase this? See, I have to be careful. Ah, um we want to keep our homeschool laws. We want to keep them legal. We want to keep them protected. We want to keep them safe. And we want to do anything possible to do that. In the state of Florida, a lot of government officials are wanting to push to give money to homeschoolers. And um, they were wanting to kind of tinkle a little bit with the homeschool laws. Well, the PEP was created to keep the homeschool laws safe. So we're going to start a whole new program. So it's, it, it's, Brenda likes to, when she's trying to help come up with some of these laws, she likes to kind of work with um, the people that she works with because she's a lobbyist. She wants to keep the homeschool laws safe and that's number one priority for her. One of them, the number one, there's lots of priorities she has, but that's definitely one. So the PEP was created to say, look, you wanna give homeschoolers money instead of messing with the homeschool laws, let's create a new program. Let's look at this and, and see if this works in the state of Florida. And here's some ideas that I have. And together, everybody just kind of came up with the PEP. And I don't know the process, to be honest. Um, I do know that um, Brenda did have a hand in it, and she knows a lot about it. Um, but it because Florida is attendance-based, when the PEP was created, um, it has its own category separate from homeschool. I, if you can just remember, it's an attendance-based state. Just because you're assigning your child one of those doesn't mean that they're not homeschooling. Because like I said, umbrella schools fall under the category of private school. So they have to unenroll as homeschoolers. And the qualifications to continue homeschooling is according to the umbrella school, however they handle it. So um, PEP functions as a, it functions as homeschool right now. The only requirement that's different from the actual homeschool laws is that if you want to continue with the PEP, then you have to um, take a standardized test. 
That's it. And national, and there's a list. That's it. But that's if you want to continue. If you don't want to continue, you don't have to take the test. You just don't reapply, and then you enroll back to homeschooling or private school or public school, whatever you want. So I'm not very uncomfortable with just being like, oh, I didn't unenroll, now I'm in the PEP program, because it still functions as homeschooling. Even though, according to attendance, that's all it's according to, how they're categorizing students, um, it's PEP. That's it, it's PEP, they're on the PEP program private school, which is umbrella school. I mean, it's just, it, 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 it's just data for the government to see how many kids, when they, how many kids are in the PE program? We have this amount of kids. How many are in homeschooling? You just don't want your child to, to be in there twice. You don't want your child to be a homeschooler and PE because that's illegal. You don't want them both. Um, because you're counting your child as two people, if that makes sense. I just got way into it. Um, I hope that makes sense. It is a good question because a lot of parents are concerned about that. After asking for review in a Facebook group, I'm mostly swore by Singapore, most swore by Singapore math. I've just bought it and we have only done two lessons so far. So I can't really give a fair review, but so far, yes, yeah, Singapore math is really good. Make, make sure to get the American version. Ah, okay. Um, okay, what's one? Oh, she's correcting herself, and then I think I auto-corrected her. Okay, so Apology is very hands-on. There's a lot of games and activities. And um, most of the people on there hated Saxon, which is what we're leaning to. See, I haven't tried Saxon yet. I just know it's dry. Um, makes sense. Thank you. And how do you know if your child is ready for pre-algebra? Um, okay, so usually the curriculum that you're looking at, they should have a pre-test uh, or a placement test. And then you just go in there and you take a placement test um, and you follow all the guidelines. They'll tell you. So I'm trying to think. I think Saxon has a placement test and you just print it out. You give it to them and you follow what it says. So that's pretty... I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, every curriculum is different. And so, for example, my son for teaching textbooks was ready for pre-algebra when he was in seventh grade. Um, and since, I mean, I do work with teaching textbooks because I really did like them and do like them. Um, but I'm not being paid for this live by them. So I can say... Um, I, well, <laughs> I do like them. I like them a lot, okay? But I will say it is not for your advanced math student. It is for your math student, like typical math student that may be struggling in math or even kids that have disabilities. It would work really well with them and kids that are really good with technology. Um, I guess I would probably say that in a paid video if they pay me to do another video. I would say that because that's the truth. That's exactly the truth. Um, yeah, I am in a state with no actual homeschool laws. <coughs> they are considering creating a registry. Um, seems scary. To, you need homeschool laws to protect you. That's just my opinion. That's just that's just my thoughts right there, because to me that no homeschool laws that scares me, because there's nothing to protect you. Or maybe there might, I don't know. I don't know what state you're in. Um, hopefully that's why the HSLDA, there's so many things. Oh, I really can't say all the things. Um, the HSLDA should come in and help. But I really, I really am a fan of having some kind of law in place to protect you and your rights. The state of Florida, I, I just... I mean, and I'm not just saying it because I live in the state of Florida, but our laws are so good and so thorough. People don't like them. They're like, oh, I'm going to get an evaluation. Oh, I have to spend money on an evaluation. Oh, this is the, why do they need to know? No, like if you really look at it deeply, they are literally there to protect the homeschool family. And actually, whenever I meet, I try to meet with the HSLDA, some of the lawyers. Um, I try to meet with them once a year during the conventions and I'll sit down with them and I'll go to their talks because they always have a talk where they share, you know, what's what's going on in Florida. And we always have like, in all honesty, we always have like, um, like two or three problems 
that is that's so easily resolved quickly because our laws so much protective so i'm just saying i in my opinion i think having good laws and understand them um laws that protect the homeschool family is a good thing so um they're there to protect you um and and like for example our laws literally say things like um the the superintendent or the school district cannot assign a grade to a homeschool family period they can't determine what grade they're in they can't pass or fail a, a student that's being homeschooled so um yeah it just it's it's good okay so many questions are coming in so let me slow down um those are my thoughts have i used florida virtual flex i did once long long time ago I've also tutored students that are on Florida Virtual School Flex. Um, I did Spanish once with my first grader when Isaac was first grade, actually. And, oh, Michigan. Okay, she's in Michigan. Hmm, I have to look up what they're doing. I'm curious now. Um, virtual, I don't know. I just, when I, I, I was kind of... Um, so first of all, it's it's secular curriculum, and so I kind of steer clear from that. Um, but I just I'm not a fan of on computer learning unless it's necessary or unless the child is older and is very um, self motivated. Um, so I think older kids can do well with flex. Their math, their math is really. I don't know how to explain it. it. It's, I'm not a fan of how they teach math on Florida Virtual School. And I actually tutored some kids through it because they have a lot of open-ended questions. Like it's just, I don't know. I just was not a fan of that. And um, there are some things like, I know my son, we might take driver's ed. I think we can get a discount on insurance. I think that's why we want to do driver's ed, but um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Oh, okay, there's no homeschool laws, but there's homeschool requirements. Okay, so I just, I I mean, it's there to protect you because there's a paper trail. If you can get someone in there to lobby good for you. And what we have in the state of Florida is, is we have the parent gets to pick the evaluator. The parent gets to create the, port I mean, this is written in the laws. The parent creates the portfolio. The parent picks the evaluator. The evaluator has to have a, has a teaching certificate in core subjects, which that means, and, and it means, because some new homeschooling families will walk and be like, I gotta find a teacher in a school system to evaluate my kids. That's not what it means. It means there are, if they, if you, there's so many like homeschool moms that used to be teachers that keep our certificate. There's a handful of us. And we want to advocate advocate for the homeschool families the best that we can to support them. Um, and so we're here to help you and we are 100% on your side. That's how it works in Florida. But we're like the middleman between the homeschool family and the state. And so we evaluate them. And of course, in our heads, when I do an evaluation, I'm looking to see what they did. And I'm asking lots of questions because most of the time I'm just really curious. <laughs> and... Um, all I'm looking, because the law only states that we're looking for improvements. And uh, that's all I'm looking for. It's just to see if the child improved. And if they learned one thing, they improved. I mean, it's not even, there's no question. The only way a child wouldn't pass a homeschool evaluation is if the parents locked them up in their room and fed them through a, a fed food underneath their door or something like that. Like they didn't do any, they didn't have any books. They didn't have anything, you know. I mean, it's just, it, how do you... It, the terms well defining terms is huge by the way that's a whole nother thing but that's a whole nother topic you if you really want to nerd out on that kind of stuff just go visit hef that's but that's a florida focused type thing so um yeah so the only requirements in michigan are that we start by the age of six and teach all the subjects see we don't even have subjects the parent decides period. <laughs> I know Texas does it. Have you seen what's going on in Missouri? I'm in Illinois. Ooh, this is a conversation. I'm a little 
what's going on in Missouri? Is this homeschool stuff? I want homeschool drama in other states. I want to know. Just wanted to say thanks for all your reviews, content. I'm pulling my kids out of public school this year and transitioning to homeschool next year. Oh, good. Yay. Okay, it's going to be hard. <laughs> like, literally, I will say it's going to be hard, but um, just know you're not alone, and there's a learning curve, and it's going to be awesome because you're going to connect with your kids, and you're never going to forget these years, and it's going to be wonderful memories, and you're going to learn together and grow together. And it's going to be awesome. So that's my thoughts. That's the best thing that's coming out of my family, at least, that we homeschoolers very much function differently than public school kids. There is definitely a, a bond that homeschool families have with their parents and families that um, public school kids don't have. It's, I love it. I've noticed it a lot because we have a friend um, who public schools his kids. And when our kids get together, you can, you can see, like you can see the difference. Another one is um, there's nothing holding back homeschool kid. There's like, there's no fear. Like, especially with talking to adults, like my kids, talk to adults, like whatever, no big deal. You know, they're just another person. But um, I've noticed public school kids come to me and they're like, and there's like this, I had uncomfortability with talking to me. Like I'm an adult, I must be respected, which I get it, I should be, right? Especially like I'm a teacher, you know, background is in teaching. Um, but it's different, it's just, it's different. It's really kind of cool, anyway. The government being hands-off has been so nice, but we also don't get any funding or assistance. I have mixed feelings about the funding and assistance, and so I'm just kind of, um, I'm watching and learning as I go. Um, it's very helpful. It's not ideal. And, you know, it's funny. I think we all know that. Uh, I'm trying to, I think I can say this. So, um... As much as we want to protect our homeschool laws and keep money out of it, the reality is, is the government wants to have more control over us. And it's going to happen. We can fight and fight and fight and fight, but they're also fighting too. The only, the, it, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm seeing it. We have to figure out ways to protect our rights. We just... We have to pray, but um, I don't know. There's just, I think now that I'm seeing a lot of what's going on in Florida politically, I'm starting to understand, you know, the importance of having things there to protect us. And um, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot that I, I'm, I'm trying to be very cautious um, on what I say because I don't want to say anything incorrect and also at the same time I don't want to say anything right now that could change in the next three years or three months three months because with this PEP stuff in Florida and even in other states like it's changing but I do I do really believe that um the government does want more control over home especially now there I this is all my opinion from based on what I'm seeing the after COVID, homeschool has changed drastically, and we all see that. More and more parents are bringing their kids home because they're seeing problems with the school system, and the government sees that they can, you know, people, and they don't, they can't control their kids anymore through the, the public school systems. So how do they want to control kids? They want to get their hands in on the homeschoolers because that's where a lot of them are going, and so they're going to do that with money. Um... It's just one of those things. There's, it's just one of those things. And I I do have a lot of mixed feelings about it. I Yes, I do have my kids on scholarships. Um, and it is, there are so many good things about it. It's just, it's one of those things you just kind of have to pray about it and see what the Lord wants you to do. And um, yeah, I didn't want to tell people for a long time that we were doing the PEP scholarship because it was such a debate and um it's still a debate um but i'm actually i i'm glad we did it so that's all i have to say about that i'm gonna move on um 
government being handled. Okay, so my kids are similar in ages to your kids. Please talk about your approach with phones. Ha ha ha. My kids want some access and I'm not ready to open up that can of worms. I took all my phones away from my kids. Um, I don't really think they need it. My kids are functioning. 14. I think they function better, actually. I really do. I, I, I just, I see a difference in them. Um, my oldest son just wants to talk to his friends. It's not about gaming. He just wants to talk to his friends. And so when he does want to talk to his friends, I let him use my phone or I let him use the iPad, but there's always some kind of like control. My daughter's phone um, just went missing altogether. Now, if they do go somewhere with a friend, I will give them their phone because I want to be able to call them and contact them. So if there's a place, for, you know, like if they go to a friend's house, like prolonged, I'll give them the phone. So, but I am not a fan of that because I feel like they can sneak things and um, it also can become an addiction and um, lack of control. So someone needs to take my phone from me, but I'm, I'm actually pretty good during the day. I don't really get on. Um, okay. Yeah, I just, that's what I do. Uh, Missouri, so Missouri, I'm curious to see what's going on. I've heard some things about Missouri. I gotta, I don't really know much. Yeah, it's a slippery slope with government involvement and homeschooling, much agreed. From what I've gathered is we have a poorly worded homeschool law. They're discussing that would leave interpretation open for whether or not we can have guns in our home. Oh, I said the word. Okay, don't demonetize me. I'm not on, <laughs> no, I, or D, whatever. Um, I'm glad that you did the emoji. And of course me, oh, my mouth just said it, hopefully. Haha, <laughs> like water, fun, play. I'm just gonna throw those words out, whatever. Okay, you know what I'm saying. I'm not 100% sure on details. That's interesting. That's really interesting. Yeah, I'd be interested looking that. Um, are you, and now, now I'm curious, are you worried about it because of what's going on in Missouri? I did hear something about Missouri. I gotta look it up. Okay, they, they are encouraging homeschoolers to contact the representatives in Missouri. Yes, Devin and I will be sure, will be for sure. So I'm guessing you guys are both Missouri. I'm gonna look that up. I'm curious because I feel like um, don't, aren't they doing the, this year they're doing the, um, convention in Missouri. So I, I, and I heard that that's like a big, that's going to be huge. What convention it's the, um, teach them diligently. Okay. I tried to read Missouri law, but it was so long. I didn't get through. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm curious. I'm I need to read these other, now I got to read Missouri. I've been curious to read that. I don't know anything about Missouri, except that my friend lives there and she homeschools. Were you worried or scared about starting your YouTube channel about homeschooling? That's probably my biggest hurdle to start when the internet can be harsh. Um, people aren't that mean. I just delete them. <laughs> I do. I just delete them. I'm not worried about the people. The people aren't mean. I, I think with the homeschool world, I think for the most part, um, it's, it's moms. Like <laughs> you'll get like a homeschool kid every once in a while, go on there and say some mean stuff and then just hit delete. The things I get, the things that I get the comments on are when I talk about my faith. Um, that's when people get mean and I don't really care. Like I'm just delete, but I, I wasn't really scared. I don't even... I, I have a very strong background in theater and um, very, very strong. Um, I actually taught that. I taught theater at a public school for a while. I also taught musical theater and, and, and uh, music, a lot of music. So I, and being a teacher, I kind of enjoy being out in the front. Um, I'm more, it's really funny. I like being on stage, but like one-on-one -on -one conversations are more difficult for me. I'm more of a like, get me on stage and I'll talk to everybody at once. 
and have that conversation, you know, via me on stage, you in the audience, or me in a group, I'm a group setting type person. Um, so going on and doing YouTube was kind of a little bit like that. So I wasn't really scared, but people aren't mean. Um, I will say right now, just with the homeschooling channel, it's very much saturated. And at this point, I really think YouTube in general at this point, unless you're already established as a vlogger, the only reason to do YouTube is one, it could be a hobby or two, you're doing it to do some kind of business or help somebody or promote something or give people advice or show people how to do things or that kind of stuff. You go to, people go to YouTube to get information, um, not as much entertainment any, I mean, there is, I know there is some entertainment value to it, but because of the shorts and all of that, people are more into watching those and stuff. So, so I, that's why over the last six years with YouTube, I've kind of morphed. I've done the vlogging. Vlogging, I'll be honest, I feel like that vlogging is going out of style, to be honest. Um, I feel like now it's all about information, tips, support, you know, uh, ministries, education, and then there's the YouTube shorts, <laughs> which is the same thing, but they're shortened. I don't know. That's just my take. That's just kind of what I'm seeing from my end. Um, and I think that would be a reason to start it. If you did start it, it's more like a vlogging and memory sake type thing. Probably won't get that many views. And if you get somebody that trolls and they're harsh, I would just delete it. Um, another thing to think of is that it is on here permanently. And I try to... Um, I've actually gone back. I don't know if any of you noticed. I've deleted a lot of my old videos that I started out with where it was just a lot of vlogging and um, just to protect my kids. So I still have my kids on and I've I've actually spoken to all of them like, can I keep this or should I get rid of it? And they actually want it online because they think it's fun. So those kind of things I've kept. So anyway, okay, I'm going to read all this. I am so talkative tonight. Sorry, guys. I guess that's a good thing, right? Um, okay. Any recommendations for Christian homeschool curriculum? That is for non-English Spanish speakers. My stepmom wants to homeschool her son with my dad. They just moved to Colorado from Columbia. That I don't know. I bet you Becca has a Spanish curriculum, though. I would, I'd be curious. I would be surprised if they don't. I don't know. I do not speak Spanish. Neither does my husband. And he's Puerto Rican. <laughs> But I, I really don't know. I've, I need to find out. That's on my list. Can you share curriculum you like that teaches worldview? Okay, are you trying? What teaches what kind of worldview? Like biblical world, worldview? Um, I, I'm kind of curious. Oh, you mean like all the different faith? Um, Summit Ministries curriculum. I can you elaborate on that? I'm an entirely new to the high school community, so I have no idea other than I'm supposed to call my representatives and tell them to vote no. Homeschool community, sorry. Yeah, and do it. But the, yeah, yeah, do it. Just do it, just do it. Um, Crew Foundation Worldview teaches a biblical review. I highly recommend their YouTube channel. Okay. I'm not in Missouri, but my cousin is a house representative. I know he would support the homeschool community. Okay. Um, do you know of any curriculum that will help my kids open a business? Um, my fantasy homeschooling dream is to run a food truck with my kids on the beach during their high school. Oh, do it. Just do it. <laughs> Watch YouTube videos on how to do it. I mean, we're moving to the, this is, everything's on YouTube. And then eventually, well, it's so funny. Okay, I don't know if anybody else notices, notices this. I've noticed it. It's like a pattern. Okay, I remember when there was a bunch of stuff that was available for free, and then people realized, well, I could charge for that. And then all the stuff that was free before transfers into online uh, paid for. So I don't know if that made sense. So I remember in the day um, when we used to get music for free. <laughs> Of course, there was a lawsuit, whatever. But eventually, people started streaming and all that started happening. Okay, what I'm saying now is on YouTube, we have all of this information 
and stuff available to us for free right now. But if you start see, seeing people are taking that stuff that's for free and they're making like an online program, pay us $150 and we'll do this package online virtual class that you can take. But like five years ago, it was on your YouTube channel for free. I don't know. I'm just noticing this. I've already people come up to me and telling me that I need to do an online course. I'm old school. I like to provide free information. That's why I'm doing these lives. But, and why did I say that? I have no idea. Um, go online and learn how to run a food truck business and do it. Do it. And teach them all the things. You can find everything online on, on YouTube, how to do it. That's just, that. that's my thought right there. Um, I don't think there's any, because everything's changing. Maybe you could find like a family that does run a food truck and like watch their videos to see how they're doing it. Um, it's just things are changing so quickly. And so if you buy a curriculum in like three or four years, it's already going to be outdated. So I would just go on YouTube and find it. Do you have an, an opinion on Easy Peasy? Yes, it's a great starter. Easy Peasy is great to start with when you're first starting to homeschool. It's free. Um, the English might need a little bit more stuff, supplements. But other than that, um, it's a great first year. If you like it, stick with it. If you don't, try something new. But it gives you a good, let's go, you know. So glad to catch your live. I know Gathered Round has an entrepreneur unit study. Campfire Curriculums has a Through the Eyes of a Chef unit study. Yeah, those are really good supplements. Um, I think Fun Schooling, Sarah has a journal on starting a business. I, you know what? Okay, let me talk about Fun Schooling. <laughs> I met this lady like five years ago, six years ago. Um, and I saw her at a convention. And she has like literally... She cracks me up. When it comes to business and entrepreneur, like she knows what to do. She knows how to market. She knows how to sell her product. I'm gonna tell you that much about her and her son. I think her son still does it with her. She has literally taken this unschooling, cause she's an unschooler. I don't know if you know her background, but she has taken this idea of unschooling and she has owned it. Like when I think of unschooling, I think of this lady. And I will never forget listening to her speak at the homeschool convention she owns it and she's she's got the entrepreneur stuff down and she promotes herself she's like she I don't know what I don't I don't even know if she I think it's like I don't know where her team is anymore because I met her five years ago but she was just starting out five years ago and I don't know I feel like she just jumped in with both feet and ran and she's good at it so I would take advice from her um Am I a fan of fun schooling journals? They're okay. They're okay. <laughs> um, she gave me a bunch of them for free to review on my channel, which I never did. Um, whoops. But, <laughs> but um, I just, you know, I couldn't get into them. I could revisit them maybe probably one day. I probably should revisit them. Um, but they're definitely uh, the ones that I have seen. Yeah, they're okay. Anyway, um, let's see what else you guys have to say. I think I'm down to that bottom list. Where was that one? I'm going backwards. I'm almost to my hour mark, by the way. So if you guys have any questions, biblical worldview. Ooh, look at generations. Because um, generations, I feel like is, I like them. I'm like, it. There's man, there's so much curriculum out there. There's my father's world. Like, I just wish I could just do that curriculum. I would have loved to take a year and just do that curriculum, but it just never works out for us. And I really like generations too. I'm going to, I'm going to pull from generations. I think that's what I'm going to do is like pool. So, all right. Do you guys have any more questions? I'm going to check out Missouri. I'm really curious. All right, here we go. Yay, you're absolutely on point. Everybody's selling stuff that is on YouTube for free. Yeah. Everybody's selling stuff that is, yeah. I'm telling you, every, there's just patterns. I'm just seeing lots of patterns. I just got done having this conversation with some boys today at uh, that go to our homeschool co-op. And we were talking about like future. And we were talking about software engineering 
and all like really everybody's into coding, right? And they want to work with computers. And um, there's a company that one of our friends work with, and I can't remember the name of it, but we went inside and we saw his workplace and it's like Google, you know how Google and Twitter, X, X, okay, where you walk in and you've got like the Zen rooms where you could go and take a nap in the middle of the day. They have crowd therapy sessions. You can go if you like, you can just schedule a trainer at work, take a break and go train in the gym. And there's a basketball court. This place is immaculate. It is like amazing. And I was like, they're it just seems like there's no stress. They have a restaurant inside of their workplace. Anyway, it's software engineering that he does. Anyway, it's amazing. And my son was like, I really want to work there. That's amazing. I just, it's like, it's awesome. And um, I just, we were talking about how like things are constantly changing in our world. And if you're looking at careers, you know, first of all, it's what you love. You want to do what you love because what you're passionate about you're going to make it work for you. You're going to find a way to keep doing it and you're going to find a way to make money from it and have a career. And um, that's number one. You, you know, you don't want to do it just because everybody's doing it kind of thing. So that's, you know, but also keep in mind what's happening in our world. Um, so like when I was a kid, my my dad used to give me these talks. He's like, I want, okay, so I wanted to be, when I was a girl, a little girl, like high school, and this is high school, I wanted to be a professional dancer. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a dancer. I wanted to be on Broadway. And my dad's like, yeah, but you don't really make much money with that. What was something else I wanted to do? Um, I loved science, loved science. And I wanted to find a way to go in the medical field. My dad, oh, this was one. He said, you need to go into pharmaceuticals. You love chemistry and all that stuff. Pharmaceuticals. Because it's going to explode in the next 20 years. And you will have a job in pharmaceuticals. And I remember going in there, you know, my mom had cancer. So we had a lot of medicine. We had to go in there. And, and there would be one guy behind the, and it was Eckerd's, right? It was one guy behind the desk. And there was like, you know, the baskets, A, B, C, D, E, F, G with the last names. And there would be like six bags back there of medication and prescription medication. Now there's like eight people plus or whatever working at one time. The, 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 they have multiple baskets per letter that are stacked full of these drugs. These people in the pharmacy and my dad was like, it's going to happen. It's so it's almost like when you're helping your kids work through some of these careers and what they're very passionate about, you want to look at some of those things that is just going to explode in the future. And we know AI is a thing. It's popular. It's going to explode even more. It's going to get smarter. And so a lot of these jobs that the kids have are going to disappear. Uh, or I'm sorry, a lot of these jobs that the kids want to have are going to disappear. And so one of my predictions is like, you know, software engineering that may be, or programming may be replaced by AI, most of it. And you'll have like a few people that are programming with the AI. I don't know these things. I could be wrong, but either way, the job's going to shrink. People are going to get laid off. It's, and plus it's really, everybody wants to do it right now. And, um, but there's other jobs that you could do. So one of the things my son is, is really interested in is counseling. That's going to explode. Like if they like, if people are interested in how people think and brain development and all like counseling, I I'm thinking by the time 20 years from now, everybody's going to have a counselor. So the, I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. Food for thoughts, just random. I don't know how I got on that tangent, but just, oh, I was talking about patterns. I was talking about patterns, just watching these patterns and trends and seeing where it's going and trying to predict what's going to happen next. Um, so that's what I'm saying on YouTube, like get all the free stuff now before people file a lawsuit or I don't know. I'm just... I don't even know what I'm talking about. So just ignore me now. Anyway, okay, just a thought. What's your professional evaluator, now homeschooler opinion on educational full testing? Not necessarily for seeking outside help or therapies, but just to know, you mean like nationally norm standardized test? Um, I mean, it's good practice for the SATs if they want to go to college. And I mean, sometimes it can kind of give you a baseline. It depends what kind of test you're using. Um, now, some a lot of states have that as a requirement that you have to do a test, but um, 
I mean, I wouldn't even mess with it unless it's a requirement. You can just, or unless you're doing SATs, because that, I mean, it's really good practice for SATs. The Piat is really good, by the way, um, just throwing that out there, but that a lot of, uh, because it's an older test, and eh, they don't accept that for some of the states. But it's a good test to get some good ideas, especially because it's given by a teacher. And the teacher can see things while they're, and it's, it's a live one-on-one -on -one kind of session with the student. So the teacher can see things as we're going through the test, like little red flags um, for disabilities or for holes in education. Um, but yeah, I mean, it can give you, it's just a tool. I wouldn't, I, I mean, I would just use it as a tool if you use it at all and for practice. And I wouldn't put too much weight into it, if that makes sense. My husband is Puerto Rican. <laughs> yeah, because he won't show himself on camera. I don't know if you were there two weeks ago, Samantha, but I tried to get my husband on camera and he was answering some questions from behind the camera. And I was like, come here. He's like, no. But there is a video with him on it. It's my Passover 101 and you can see him. <laughs> He's very different than me. Okay, now sixth grade learner and still has many dyslexia, dysgraphia issues, making progress, but a slow pace. Feeling behind and like failing. No, just keep working on those foundations. And when they get those foundations down, um, just, well, that's one advice. I've got like several thoughts actually in my head. And, um, you know, one of which is work on the foundations and don't worry about them being too foundational. Everybody has something that they're struggling with. Um, people with ADHD have have issues with scheduling and, and staying on task and getting things done and not procrastinating and hyper focus, but it's something that they have to work on. And then there's other people who have, you know, for example, meltdowns and, and meltdowns are something that they need to just work on deep breathing and stuff like that. Other people have math. It's just, it's harder for them to do certain math problems. And so everybody's going to have strengths and weaknesses. And just because we were raised in a society where we had certain benchmarks that, you know, if you achieved those ben benchmarks, then you were okay. But if you didn't, something was wrong with you. And that's been brainwashed in our minds for so long. So then when we come to a child that has a difficulty in dyslexia or dysgraphia or any type of disability or even if it's just an emotional regulation or you know a characteristic or whatever we automatically try to hold them up to these standards that are put in place by man for a lot of reasons that you may or may not necessarily agree with and then we get focused on them and we use them as kind of like the end all be all for our kids. And then we get hard on ourselves and all the things. Okay, my child has dyslexia. We just need to work on that and we need to find tools to help them with their reading. Um, whether we look at Orton Gillen Gillenham or whether we get a tutor that specializes in that method um, we're just going to try. We're just going to work harder. We're going to learn how to persevere. She's going to learn perseverance and I'm going to learn perseverance through this process. So, um, it's okay. It's totally okay. She probably, I don't know if they are, it just says learner. Um, so I don't know if they're male or female, but there's probably a strength that they have, uh, that nobody else has. Also, there is a book called The Gift of Dyslexia. So if you want to be encouraged, read that book. Because people who have dyslexia, um, they the best way to describe it is they can see around things better than other people. So people with dyslexia have been known to go into careers like architecture because they can visually, like, they can see around things, right? That makes sense. And... Um, uh, we all know what's a your face, the director, because they, he, he can, it's just a, a different way that their brain thinks, but they have giftings. It's just, read the book, it's called The Gift of Dyslexia, and it'll probably give you some confidence there. Um, but at the same time, you don't want to just quit and say, my child just can't read, I'm done. At the same time, you want to learn how to persevere through it. So those are my thoughts, and I hope that was encouraging. Um, dead set on becoming a zoologist his whole life. 
The first job he wanted to be was a wild cat. He is now 10 and not much has changed. Well, there's a lot you can do with that. There is so much you could do with that. Um, I do not, I think having humans, there's something about human interactions that we need in our world that AIs will never be able to replace. <laughs> and taking care of animals and learning about them and all those things. Yeah, and they're just, you know, yeah, there's a lot you could do. That's cool though. I'm glad he's dead set on that. That's awesome. At least he knows what he wants. Um, science curriculum overview recommendation recommendation on a science curriculum overview. Science is a subject you really get to. Um, Apologia. I love Apologia. It's awesome. Um, that is my recommendation. Um, I'm trying to read what. Um, Oh, I see what they're saying. See, I go on a tangent and then they mean another question. Well, oh, back to the science curriculum. Apology is really good. You can find some good stuff with master books. I don't know what grade you are in. Uh, when you say science curriculum overview, you mean like one that's like a general science? Um, look at Brienne Press. Might be interesting. Well, they kind of go through the ages. It's a little bit different approach. Um... Sorry, master books, general science, master books might have something similar to that with their things like the world of science curriculum that Answers in Genesis put out. And I think that might be the closest to, I am not a fan of general science, but I know a lot of people are. I just think kids learn better when you study one specific subject at one time. So, and really like with elementary school science, you've got... If you really want to get down to it, you've got the physical science, which includes, you know, chemistry, you can include chemistry with that. Chemistry, physical science, um, earth science. Apology just covers them all. I'm sorry. I'm kind of dead set on apology and some of the master books. Oh, I want to tell you guys a secret so bad, but I got to be careful. Uh, I have a big mouth. And I have to watch myself. Just trust me when I say apology is really good. <laughs> and I can't tell you the story behind it. Sorry. Okay. So he's saying, oh, testing for disabilities and sensory. So now I got to put that into context. Oh, lots of questions, guys. And I, and okay. So concept, what's your professional evaluation, homeschool and opinion on testing? Are you saying testing for disabilities, disorders, sensory issues? I mean, as long as you don't put too much stock into it and you like, if you, if you try, if you test your child for ADHD, <coughs> Now your child has ADHD and you use that as an excuse for them not to be able to do things. As long as you don't use it as an excuse, as long as you say, okay, my child has ADHD. All right, um, there's these traits that go along with ADHD. Here's some tips I can use to help them correct those traits. All right, I'm going to work towards giving them the tools that they need to be successful in life when they have this struggle. As long as you don't use it as an excuse. I don't see anything wrong with it. I mean, I, I, I have a bad habit of like analyzing things, people. Where I'm like, hmm, I wonder if you have a sensory issue. Sens sensory issue, the SPD stuff and sensory processing disorder is so fascinating to me. I'm just throwing that out there. Um, so that's my thoughts. I don't know if that answered the question. Um, any tips for a working, working homeschool mom trying to stay consistent with our homeschool? I have a hard time establishing routines and being consistent. I'm, I would need more context, but if you're working, that's a routine that you've set in stone. Um, I don't know, make a chart, make a list, have an accountability partner. Um, I have to do that. My husband made me, put, he put me on a routine. I didn't like it though. He did. <laughs> and that's my accountability partner, but you could have a friend that does it with you too. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't have more advice. I found the MO problem. It could be easily fixed with correcting the language. I don't know what that means. Um, okay, the AI can counsel too. 
we must have the discuss this this no they can't count i <laughs> we might have to have this discussion because i personally don't think that an ai robot has that human interaction i would not go to an ai robot for any advice when it came to counseling um so i'm trying to understand the rest the ai can counsel too we must have this discussion what are your what are you preparing for me heaven until then then we will do the math i don't understand that question or comment i'm going to be honest but for me i think also i think uh from a faith i don't think ai knows anything about faith right now at least i don't know i don't they don't they don't know how to think yet they don't know how to think and that I know that that is a that is quoting I'm quoting somebody who has their doctorate um in science um and who's really big into that stuff and he literally told me he said AI cannot think on its own and so when it comes to faith-based stuff they can't really counsel you there at all or even teach you correctly so anyway brainwash well put in SB 727 the definition of homeschool as a school was moved and applied to all the status, not just sections. And so which state are we talking about? I guess, I don't know what state that is. I have a blind four-year-old that I'm now homeschooling. She doesn't walk or talk. And there are, there are there any curriculum you're recommending? I would do something that's audio. Also, should I focus on activities and day? I would read to her. Oh, I would read, 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 read. I would hold her and read her and um, teach her how to feel things. I don't know if you can, um, I don't know how you can find someone to help her teach Braille. That would be interesting. But educationally, I would just read. I would just read a lot. And then, because she's only four. And um, I wonder, I'm sure you have lots of those touchy feel, but just read. That's the best advice I have. Um, I'm sure she just wants to cuddle up and read. I consider apology zoology, but my 10 year old would fly through them too fast for my budget. Uh, videos. Ooh, um, zoo passes, go to the zoo, have them question the people at the zoo till they just, they would love it. Have a kid just question, 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 question. Get zoo passes if you have a zoo around you. Go once a week. Focus on an animal a week. And get to know all the people that work there because they love stuff like that. They'll have them work. They'll have him working there before he's 16 if you do that and they get to know you. Yeah. Okay. Um, span. Oh, Alvary has a good. Oh, by the way, you don't need a book curriculum to count it as a class. I mean, how old is he? A 10 year old. Yeah. I mean, he can have, he could fly through the apology a book, but um, there's also stuff on teacher paid teachers too, that you can get really cheap, but like zoo pass, I'm just thinking in my head, like zoo passes, just have them focus on it and maybe a mammals for like a month and do like as many mammals and then have them maybe write a report or just ask questions. I'm just, in my mind, I literally visually seen him asking the zoologist questions and all the different programs. I don't know if you have a zoo near you, um, but that's what I would do. <laughs> yep, overanalyzing him here. Will you be, yes, I will be at the FPA convention. Um, I am trying really hard. I put in my application because I'm not ready to speak there because a lot of the people that are speaking at the FPA are, um, Ron DeSantis. <laughs> I don't know if he's coming back or not. Or they are trying to sell curriculum. And I really don't have anything to sell except my book and my um, curriculum that I wrote for Naomi that I have on Teacher Paid Teachers, which is actually free on Teachers Paid Teachers. But I, I'm putting it all together and so I'm going to sell it. I'm actually going to the North Carolina Convention for Special Needs and I'm putting together packets. I have them sitting over there in the corner. I've been working on them. Um, but I don't have anything big to sell at the FPA and I feel like the boost would be like kind of a waste of money for me. So what I did apply for, I did apply to volunteer, but I did apply to do the booth where I give advice 
and, or the no, I don't know what they call it, like the new homeschooler booth. And I, I did text both Susan Nunn and, um, the only thing I'm really worried about and I'm praying really hard because my heart is to help obviously, cause I'm on here for free, but <laughs> my heart is to help and, um, and support homeschoolers the best that I can, um, encourage them, you know, all the things I'm not going to go through that list because you know, but, um, I'm worried that the fact that I have a successful YouTube channel might be in conflict with um, the FPA, which it shouldn't be at all because I support the FPA hands down and I don't really have any enemies, um, but I just, I want to hide. I want to wear a big FPA shirt and just hide in the booth and give advice, but I put my application in. I'm really hoping that she accepts me. And I could be at the FPA booth um, counseling new homeschool families. So other than that, I'm going to walk around and like talk to everybody. It's really cool now because like now I go and I like know people that are speaking. <laughs> like it's so funny. It's just hilarious. Um, so yeah, it's cool. Okay. They are preparing them to do much of what people can do. So as people of faith, we might just talk about these issues. Wait, I'm, oh, we're going about, um, they're preparing them to, yeah, well, and as people as faith, AI can't, I don't know, I'm sorry, I like AI can't, I just, I, I mean, yeah, we could have that discussion, um, but it's hard to do it through this, because, um, I feel like it's not a fair, unless I was typing back and forth, um, but it does provoke me to look more deeply into it. Um, okay, Braille Alphabet Board. It's handmade in the U.S. OMG, I hope I see you there. Yeah, come see me. Um, I'll be there. But you know where I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get in that booth. I know that um, Georgia Purdom is going to be there. Dr. Georgia Perman, I'm going to stalk her. Um, <laughs> so any of her talks I might go to. And um, I'm trying to, I always go, I'm going to go to a lot of the high school ones this year. And who's the other, Connor, Connor? Oh, I don't know his name all of a sudden. I don't know his name. I'm gonna stalk him too. There's a list of people that, Georgia Purnum I'm gonna stalk though because I love her. Um, so I'll be at her talks. <laughs> I heard someone suggest asking your child to spend their summer becoming an expert in whatever they want. Yeah, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. I like that. Um, I'm in North Carolina. What conference will you be at? Oh, special needs convention with Terry McGee. And it's for special needs education. It's very small. They're going to have Temple. I don't know how to say her last name. She is autism. She's like the face of autism. She's going to be their keynote speaker. I can't say her last name, so I'm not even going to say it. But Temple, you know who I'm talking about. If you know anything about the autism community, you know who I'm talking about. She's going to be their keynote speaker. And I'm not speaking. I'm just at a booth. I'm mostly there to network. Because, yes, that is. Tibble Grandin. Um, yeah, see? Um, I'm there to network is what I'm saying. It's Lily. Um, uh, I also uh, met, I didn't make the deadline for speaking, <laughs> I didn't make the deadline, but Terry said that if I want to do it next year, that I would have first dibs. All the people that were there will have first dibs again. So if I want to come back, I could do that. Um, but yeah, Peggy's going to be there. I don't know if you guys know that. So Peggy, um, Peggy Plyer, she has a, uh, it's called S, if you have special needs children, you should check it out. Um, S special educate. Wait, S-P-E-D, SPED Homeschooling, Special Education. That's what it stands for. It's getting late and my brain is going. It's been gone for a while, actually. It's been a long day. But Peggy Plower. So I actually, I don't know if you know this. I haven't really promoted it because she hasn't put her first. I, maybe she has. I should check on this. Um, <laughs> I teamed up with her, actually. I've actually gone on her channel and subbed for her a few times. But she, um, I love her. I've known her for five years. Um, um, so, yeah, so I'm sorry, I'm going to get that question. It's a good question that, um, th that you put in there. Uh, 
Peggy has a channel called as Sped Homeschooling, and she works for Salem Minute Salem Salem, and that is a really big company, and they do the podcast through that as well as radio, and we are I am part of her now team that she has doing podcast with and we do group podcast anyway so I've teamed up with her which is kind of fun um and I really like her she's kind of I almost feel like she's kind of mentoring mentoring me <laughs> on the business side of things since we're in the same niche and we're both believers that kind of stuff so okay now this is a personal question and I think this is going to be my last question because I went over my hour and this is not um homeschool yes but it's about our messianic congregation um, in filling of Holy Spirit, yes. Um, speaking in tongues, so um, it's about half and half at our congregation. Um, that's what's in terms of our congregation. Uh, deliverance, yes. So um, we're basically uh, best way to describe it. Our congregation is not like a mainstream church, as in like American. <laughs> is not your typical American mainstream church when it comes to culture, I should say that, culturally speaking. We attract a lot of foreigners um, because we are so unique. That's one thing. We also, uh, because there's like this, because we celebrate the High Holy Days, um, there is an attraction of, of different um, denominational theological backgrounds. So. It gets interesting, and we talked about this. I guess you, I don't know if I talked about this, but we have people in our congregation that are Reformed and Arminian. We have people in our congregation that believe that uh, speaking in tongues is like um, a prayer language, but also uh, it just you can walk up and speak in tongues and... I, I don't know. There's like different interpretations of it. I don't know much. But then there's other people that believe that speaking in tongues is only um, a different language. And you got both its dreams in our congregation. Um, there's such, we've got people that believe in the rapture, but then we have people that don't believe in the rapture. I mean, it's such a mix. And everyone's like, how on earth do you do that? And I have to say, I don't know. I don't know. But I will say the, the majors are there. So um, in, in filling of the Holy Spirit, yes. Um, deliverance, yes. Um, speaking in tongues, like I said, that one's kind of divided in our congregation. Um, I hope that answered the question. Yeah. It's... it's it's so crazy, but we do, we have a lot of foreigners. Um, the American church is so different from churches in other countries. And we attract a lot of Hispanics. We attract a lot of um, Eastern European. We have Armenian, we have Ukraine, we have Russian. Um, wow, what's that other country? Um, over there, <laughs> we have people from Finland. Uh, we have people from Germany. We have people from England. We have we don't have any French. We have Russian. We get a lot of Russian. Um, we have Moroccan. Uh, we have Israelis. We have a uh, we have a lot of South American. We've got Colombia. We've got Venezuela. We've got Ecuador. Um, we got Brazil. We've, I had to think about it. I was like, we don't, yes, we do have Brazil. Um, we have so many, yep. We have somebody from Madagascar. Okay. We've, yeah. Um, Canada. Yes. Canada's representative and Americans. And I kind of joke with my husband because I feel like a minority there. <laughs> and I really do. Like, I'm not joking. I feel like a minority there. So it's beautiful in that way. That's one thing that's because I think we are very far from the American, we are very not American typical culturally church. Um, and, and being Messianic, that we celebrate the high holidays, 
there is definitely a sense of community and family and perseverance among it, it, it. We and we have a core group. We do have a very strong core group with leadership and all the things, and we do have an organization that there is an organization within the Messianic world, which is called the MJA. There's also the UMJC. Um, so there is some structure behind it. Um, then there's fringe groups as well, but, um, we are, there's different fringe groups. Um, I'm not going to get into that. It's just a very different, um, it's just, it's cool like that. I hope that answered. I, I said way more. I went way too late. I, <laughs> I'm tired and I got to go to bed. Um, we had, we have a doctor appointment tomorrow at 815 in the morning. So if you remember to pray for us, that's going to be fun. And I got to remember to go because I get into a routine and then I, for, you know, I've done that. Have you guys forgotten doctor appointments because you get into your schooling routine? I have. So I'm going to go. Um, I hope that, uh, helped answer. I hope I answered some good questions. I hope I didn't sound too. I, I, I know I'm tired and my brain is dead, but I hope I helped. So I hope I, uh, next week I'm not going to do a live, but I will do it the week after I will go ahead and sometime in the next day or two, put up a, um, schedule for that live. So you can see it on there and then I'll put it on Facebook and all the things. So thank you guys so much for hanging out and, um, I will see you in two weeks. Well, I'll see you on Thursday cause I'll put my video on Thursday. It's an interview. It's an interview. It's a very long one, but it's a really good interview. So I hope you enjoy it, and thanks, guys.